Today's video is brought to you by storyboardthat.com. Please visit teachercast.net slash storyboard that for a limited time offer. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Tech Educator Podcast, episode number 88. Thank you so much for joining us today. Today, we're talking all about Google Sites, ways to create digital portfolios for your teaching and for your students. We have our great co-hosts on today. I want to bring on Mr. Sam Patterson. Sam, how are things today? What is going on? Is anything going on out in the Bay Area today? Yes, uh, we're all very excited because all of the wrestlers are here. They're just down the road. I think parking goes all the way up to my school. No, actually, I was down by WrestleMania earlier today. Jeff, do you know how much parking at WrestleMania costs? Let me guess. $3. It's more. $4. Okay, if you took your answer and you multiplied it by 10, you would have the cost for parking a mile away. $400? You teach music, huh? I do, yes. There's a lot of numbers in music, isn't there? And our next co-host today is Mr. Jeff Herb. Jeff, how are things over in Chicagoland? Oh, fantastic, Jeff. Thanks. How are things with you in Philadelphia? I, I'm good. I see people standing in line here for WrestleMania. It's pretty cool. And uh, today we are talking all about Google Sites. Jeff, are you a fan of Google Sites? Do you use Google Sites? Jeff, I have to be perfectly honest and say that no, I don't use Google Sites, and it's not necessarily because I'm not a fan of them. I had a bad experience with Google Sites a number of years ago, right when they were first rolling out, and Jeff, to be perfectly honest, I knew that I could build better sites using WordPress back then, and so when I started with WordPress, I just did not look back, but I'm really excited to see what you guys are using Google Sites for to see how I can introduce that to teachers in the classroom. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that because the reason why we're talking about Google Sites today is really about communication. Communication between teachers and students or even building portfolios. You see, this week I had an opportunity to go up and speak at a Google Boot Camp, and I had a presentation all about Google Sites. And... We also talked about WordPress. See, if you're going over to TeacherCast.net, where our homepage is, you can check out over on TeacherCast University, our, one of our latest posts. It is actually TeacherCast.net slash Google Sites. And it is a whole bunch of information on how to do Google Sites, where to do Google Sites, and we're actually going to be adding this video on here as well. You see, Google Sites are really, really amazing to use. They are really just an extension of your school website. You see, um, I also do the website for Lower Alloways Creek, and you can see here that this is a WordPress website. However, the school district wanted us to have the teachers to be able to create their own websites. And you know, Jeff, as you might know, WordPress is good, but there is a little bit of a learning curve to it, especially when you're starting out and you don't know things about, you know, themes and colors and pages and posts. So what we did is we yeah. set all of the different departments up with Google Sites. And this is a site here from our Board of Ed, and we just chose a plain white theme. But for here, we actually were able to create a Google Site that holds all of our policies, and all of our policies are up here on PDF file. And I'll show you how to basically take this Google folder and embed it onto the page. We have all of our agendas. We have all of our minutes for our meetings. We have all of our curriculums. Um, whenever something goes out under human resources, we have all of our job descriptions. Everything can easily be managed here on this Google site very easily, very quickly. One of the neat things about this is that anybody can have the password, meaning Right now, the only people that can get into this site is myself, the CSA, and also the board secretary. And then we also have a Google site for the library, which the only people that have the password for that is myself and the librarian. So you can have Google sites set up as open, meaning anybody can see them. You can also have them set up so that way 
things are password protected. In fact, you can have an entire site locked down. Or if you are creating this as a class website, you can have this set up so that way individual pages are locked out for individual people. Now, Sam, you're not a stranger for Google Sites. Uh, talk to us a little bit about some of the work that you've done in the past using Google Sites. So I've used Google Sites in a number of ways. I've used Google Sites as a classroom teacher, and I ran my ninth grade English class off of a Google Site uh, before my school got an LMS. So if you're in a school where they're not subscribing to Edmodo or Schoology or something like that, you can set up a Google site. They even have a classroom template and you can get rolling really quickly. And just as you were showing there with the school board, you can organize all of your documents there. You can organize important links there, uh, that kind of thing. The other thing you can do is let's say you're the head of the graduation committee. One year it was my job to make graduation happen at my school. And I set up a Google site that had all of the different tasks and all of the different uh, basically work lists that people were working on as well as all of the support documents so that anyone who wanted to know about what the state of graduation was and where all the different moving parts were could go to that one site and look at it. And I think that um, they, that Google refers to that usage as the secure group wiki use case where you're essentially building a site that's going to work for this event or this need not going to necessarily be huge or long term it could be annual but you can just kind of put it up get moving with it and you know get done pretty quickly there's a lot of people that are on our chat right now over on teachercast.tv if you are listening you are certainly more than welcome to add to the conversation a lot of people are already saying do we use google sites or do we use google classroom and I'm here to tell you that you should really be using both. Google Sites is going to be used for your pages, such as your assignments, your all the extra things that you add to it. And then you go into Google Classroom, and that's where you make your assignments, your announcements, and things like that. I am hoping one day you'll actually be able to embed your Google Classroom onto your Google Sites. And I know they're working on something like that, but at right now... That is certainly not there. So if you are listening out there on TeacherCast.tv, we are here live every single Sunday night. Sam is also going to be giving us the WrestleMania report. So, Sam, as we get some uh, some things going in there, maybe we have some pictures or some periscopes, we can certainly talk about that. So let's dive into our demonstration here. And if you have any questions, let me know. Or if you guys out there have any feature requests, we can certainly show you. How do you find Google Sites? Well, there's two ways of doing it. The first way is you can go to sites.google.com, and the other way is to go to google.com slash sites. And we're going to pull I, – I know, really. And we're going to pull this up here, and you can see I have a few Google Sites already selected. And it's really, really easy to create a Google Site. Basically, we're going to come over here to the button and hit the Create. And now here's the catch of this. When you're creating a site, you need to – sign yourself up with a unique site location, a unique URL. You see, when you're looking at the site URL, and let me see if I can pull this up a little bit bigger, it says your URL is going to be sites.google.com slash site slash. And that's important because it doesn't say sites.google.com slash teachercast slash sites. So in other words, we had this problem over the week at the Google Boot Camp where I told everybody to create a site called Google Boot Camp, and we couldn't do that because it is a unique site to your world, not to your account. Does that make sense, guys? Yes, it does. So in other words, I couldn't come in here and create sites.google.com slash site slash WrestleMania because I'm sure that, that the WWE has set up a Google site to support WrestleMania. So let's set this up. Are you really sure? Type it in. Try it. Try it. Come on. Try it. 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 WrestleMania 2015. Or WrestleMania 31. 31. We're, WrestleMania. we're going to do 31 right here. Okay. What do we say? All right. So then up here, we're going to name our site. And so we are the WrestleMania non-watchers, but broadcasting about it. And you might have typed waters. What? You might have typed non-water. Oh, that's right. We want to make W-A-T-C-H. 
W A T C H watchers, but broadcasting about it. Good. And then down here, we can change this to WrestleMania 31. All right. So a couple things we're going to do here. We can select a theme. I'm not going to do this right now because I want to keep things clean so we can do our demonstration. Under more options, we can have a site description. Now, would you believe, guys, Google is actually reading these site descriptions and they're going to index it in Google. I do believe that. Okay, so here we are, <laughs> a nice website about Isn't it always harder to type when potentially hundreds of people are watching you? Uh, well, <laughs> I'm not too worried about the potential right now. And so <laughs> over here we have our our, our little capture which is P H Y P H and I'm going to back out of this, and I'm going to hit create, and we'll just see if uh, we can do this under sites.google.com slash site slash WrestleMania 31. It looks like somebody has already taken that site. So let's try this one more time here. N-U-L-Y-P-H-E. -E. That would be a way of pointing out my mistake. Okay, so creating my <laughs> site. Ah, the location I have chosen is not available uh you're correct all right so i'm gonna do hyphen 2015 and we'll see if that one has been taken up look it changed oh. it and then told you now Took that one was totally. also okay so cow, let's really? just say teacher cast wwe fan boy okay <laughs> that ought to do it that ought to do it yes <laughs> Oh, yes. <laughs> we must be making something last night. <laughs> All right. So here we go. We have our blank Google site. Now, again, the reason why I didn't want to choose a theme here is because I didn't want to muddy things up here. But you can see here we have a Google site here that was used from one of the templates. And there's a lot of things that you can do here. We'll show you how to change the name. We're going to show you today how to create these sidebars, how to put pictures up here, how to have different layouts on your pages. Let's dive into here, and if there are any any, um, any, any questions that are going to come up from the chat room or if uh, Triple H is watching and wants to ask a question about how to update his website, we can certainly look into that too. All right, so the first so thing that – yes? Peggy was asking what WrestleMania was, but I, I think I, I, I it looks like that got taken care of by oh, – uh, WrestleMania is actually what happens when you put two 16-month-olds in the same crib. Aha. Yes. Um, and that is why Daddy has uh, theme music already selected for each baby. So here's what I want to do. I want to change some of the things about this site. I want to, if you notice, Sam, this this title is a bit long. So that is not a good title. That's not a good title. Google would not like that. So I'm going to come down here. Now, there's really like three buttons that we need to worry about. The one here up says edit page, and that is for editing pages. This one over here says create a page, and that is for creating pages. Uh, hi, Craig. Craig is making sure that his voice is up here. I'm going to turn off Craig's notification. And then over here we have our gear or our more actions. And if you look here, it says E, C, and M. So I'm going to type an M for more actions. And I'm going to come down here to manage sites. And this is really the brainchild behind everything in WordPress language, Jeff. This is your dashboard. And I'm going to change this site name to just, um, uh, let's see, Wrestlers in Favor, in, in F-A-V-O-R, of Puppets. And we can hit save. And when we hit save, we're going to come back here to our website. And now you can see our title is much more smaller. And so let's take a look at what we can do here. This is a page, and much like WordPress, Jeff, we do have pages and posts, believe it or not. So I'm going to create a page here. Actually, you know what? I'm going to edit a page, and we're going to come in here to our page editor. And over here, instead of saying home, maybe we're just going to put down WWE Puppet Club because we're going to talk about WWE Puppet Clubbers. And here we have our text box. And uh, Sam, let me ask you a question here. Do you like cupcakes or do you like bacon or is there a particular favorite ipsum that you have i am gonna have to say that bacon ipsum let's go with it you know or 
you know Literati? There's um. Let's just go with Bacon Ipsum right now. And so that's over at BaconIpsum.com. I'm going to do three paragraphs, and let's do all meat. We're going to do three meaty paragraphs, and I'm just going to copy this. So that way we have some filler stuff in here. Do you want to explain what Bacon Ipsum is for the people that are really confused right now? I think we should do an entire show about Bacon Ipsum. <laughs> I, I actually think we did an Ipsum show, like, I don't know, 30 or some shows ago. I know we talked about it, but Ipsum is just something you can use to create uh, filler text. Well, the most famous Ipsum is the, what is it, Lauren Ipsum? And you'll often see these, if you spend much time on shoddy websites, you'll come across it on websites that are claiming to be real. And you'll realize they're actually full of nothing but this fluffy filler text. <laughs> so over here we have our filler text. Now, just like any WordPress or, or you know, Word pages, Google Docs, we can take this text and through the menu bar here, we can change the fonts. We can change the font size, make this bigger, make this smaller. Of course, we've got bold, italicized, underscore. We can change the color. We can do a whole bunch of things. If we wanted to, we can create a link. And now, just like anything else here in Google Docs, we can create a link to a page. We can create a link to a page outside of our website. And my suggestion is if you're linking to a page inside your website, you want to keep it in the same tab. If you're going to be linking to something outside, say, for instance, HTTP. Instructional tech talk dot com. This is outside of our website, so I'm going to click the button that says open in new window. And so now I've made everything there a hyperlink. I can indent, I can outdent, I can make bullets out of it. I can do a lot of things. My favorite is this one here that says remove formatting. So if I highlight everything, I can remove that formatting. And I'm going to bring this back over here to Georgia so I am right there. And so basic things that you can do here. Now, the first thing that I like to show people how to do when I'm writing a blog post is to create blog headings. So I'm just going to type in here types of bacon. And then uh, over here, I'm going to create another page title. And we're going to have types of meat products. And then <laughs> over here, I'm going to have wrestlers who eat meat okay and now you'll notice here when i did these headings i had capital letters and i'm just one of those guys that whenever i do titles or, or headings i like to think in capital letters now in order for this to stand out i can do a few different things i can highlight these and make this bold but i don't think i'm going to do that i think i'm going to come over here to format and i'm going to use header styles now i've got header two three and four and I think for this, I'm going to create a header two. And now that might not look like much, but when I come over here to save and I look at this, you'll notice that this is a little bit bigger. It automatically bolded it. And so now you can tell that you've got a header here. I'm going to change this a little bit. I'm going to come back in here to edit page. And over here under types of meat products, I'm going to go into format and I'm going to use header three. And then over here, I'm going to go back into format and I'm going to type in header two. So why did I do that? Why did I have different header styles? And what do these header styles mean? Well, if I'm looking at the text, you can clearly see here that it helps separate the text. It helps our eyes glaze over the page and figure out what exactly we're looking at. But more importantly here, we're going to add a table of contents. And this works for websites. This works for Google Docs. Um, this skill right here got me through grad school. I'm just going to leave a little bit of space here. And I'm going to come over here to insert. And I'm going to go to insert table of contents. And now it says, well, how, long, how wide do I want it and how many levels? And I'm going to show all levels. And let's just make it 250 wide. And that brings up this. Now I'm going to shrink this up a little bit. And so now I have my table of contents and I have my my blog header. And so when I hit save, now you can see that I have a table of contents that has my heading two, my heading three, and then my heading two again. And that is the way that you create a table of contents. Again, this works in all Word documents, all pages documents, all Google Docs, and it also works here in Google Sites as well. 
pretty cool, Jeff. I know you're working on your heavy thesis projects pretty soon. This might be a way that you can write a long, you know, stanza full of text and then break it up into table of contents. I've also seen, Jeff, a, a great plugin called TOC Plus that will give you table of contents per post and if you're interested in per page on WordPress. Hmm, that's really cool. And so one of the things that I did here, and I, I didn't quite do it to the fullest because I, I wasn't finished with it yet, but on this page here, because I have all of this text of Google Sites, um, I actually created a table of contents over here, and it didn't look perfect, which is why I went for the QR code, but I actually was able to take all of this text and export it down, and then I just had a big, huge table of contents, so that way you didn't have to look you know, 10 miles full of text. It was very, very easy to look through. That's great. How are we doing with questions? I can, uh, I can take a, a quick breather here. So oh, the table of contents is going to auto update. Like once you build it, does it auto populate as you increase the like if I, if you go in and add two more headings, will that auto populate for that? Oh, absolutely. Let's say that you're reading this, and as an author, you say flank, ribeye, ground, round, and swine. I'm interested in learning about that, so I can come over here. I'm going to hit enter twice. Parts of the pig that are yummy. And let's say that I wanted to make this into another heading three. So I can come back over here and save this. And when I save it, you'll notice over here that the table of contents is automatically updated. Very nice. Now Very I'll nice. tell you what, what, what's the obvious here. It's not pretty. It doesn't look fashionable. And you know that's one of the things about Google Sites is it's not gonna, you're never gonna beat out WordPress as far as beautiful looking sites. But very, very quickly, we were able to create a page and not have to worry about themes and posts and settings and all of those things that you normally have to do with setting up WordPress. You can give this to a second grader. You can give this to a librarian. And it doesn't really matter. Everything here is going to get started very, very quickly. Now, the question here that Craig just came in with is, can you customize how the table of contents looks? Yes. I'm going to come back in here to edit page. And when I click on the table of contents, I have this menu that pops up. I can center this. I can align this to the right. I can also wrap the text. So then I can go into properties and I can say, well, I only want this at 200 wide. So when I save this, now I have my text and I have my table of contents and it looks a little bit prettier. Very so. Cool. Craig, when you're asking, can you customize it? Yes. Can I change this into different colors? No, not that I know of at least. Uh, Jeff, the plugin that I was telling you about with the WordPress, you can make this pink or blue or anything that you want. Gotcha. Um, this will change depending on the theme that you're using for Google Sites, but I think that looks pretty, and I think that that certainly looks appropriate for anybody that's making a simple website for their portfolio. Maybe you have, you know, your lesson plans and your your resumes and your all these different things. This is a really nice way to, to portray it all on one simple page. So Peggy has a question for you, Jeff. What is the difference between the table of contents and the navigation, which she says she has in her left menu already? Excellent question. Well, there's two words. One is table of contents. And right now, Google looks at table of contents as everything on this page. That's not to be confused with this word over here, which is sitemap. And a sitemap is a list of everything that's in this website. So you can see here with the sitemap that it automatically generates, we have our title, and then we have our one page. And as we're going to build things over the next uh, little bit here, you're going to see that this sitemap is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Very cool. Now, awesome. there is a few questions I'm noticing here about wikis. Can you create a wiki on here? Yes. yes. This is a great way of creating wikis. Um, personally, I'm not a big fan of the wiki. Um, and, and please help me out here, guys. A wiki is just a website that people can collaborate and create content to. Is right. it, isn't you that know, what we're doing? Wikis are phenomenal for collaborative groups, right? I've used wikis for a lot of EdCamp type stuff, for some class type stuff. It allows multiple users to be authors on a website without hassling with the um, administrivia of Blogger or WordPress. 
as a dedicated blogger user, I almost always answer the problem of how do we work together with peers, join blogger. Um, I think we all kind of solve our problems different ways and wikis certainly are a great way to solve like the collaborative website issue. So let's talk about that collaborative website issue. I have my page and the neat part about Google Sites is I can create this site as a template. So maybe I set up two or three pages and then I want to save this as a template and then Sam and Jeff, you being my students, you can then copy that website much like a Google Doc and now you've got my template for, for the biology lesson or for the class that we're using. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to do a couple other things here. I'm going to share this website with you. And so just like a doc, I can make this website public. I can make it anyone with only the link, or I can make it specific people possible. And if this was under GAF or GAFE or GAFA, I it would have a fourth option, which is only people in the domain. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to invite Sam. And I'm going to invite Herb. And so as we're doing this here, you guys can start to build your own sites as we go here. And so now you guys have the ability to edit. I can make you the owner. I can even make you just somebody that can view this site, for instance, if you were my student or so. Now, what does all of that mean? Um, my advice is to check out the website over here on TeacherCast University. All the links are going to be in it. I have all of that. You know, what does this mean on here? Now I can also come up here and say enable page level permissions. So in other words, I can say Sam is an author of this, but he can only edit X number of pages. And so that's a nice way. Maybe I have multiple classes. I can set this up so that way certain students can get in and certain students can get out. If you really want to use this to its advantage, find a kid or two and each week make them the author of the website and give that to them as a little uh, incentive for being good students here. So now that I have everybody here taken care of, maybe Sam uh, and Jeff on their end can be building sites onto here and we can see how that works. I'm going to make a brand new page and I'm going to do so by creating a page and I'm going to name this site more types of bacon and I'm going to select a template. Now there's a few different templates to use here. I'm just going to stick with this website template. We're going to get into the other ones very soon. Where do I want this? I want to put this at the top level and I'm just going to create hit the create button. Welcome back to Digital Today's video is brought to you by Kirkville Web Design. Uh, somebody's got their stuff on. All right. So now we have our page and I want to add a couple things to this. I want to integrate this with my Google Docs. I'm going to come over here to insert and I want to insert maybe a calendar that I'm using. And so I'm going to come over here to our broadcasting schedule. And when I hit select, it automatically pulls in the TeacherCast broadcasting schedule. Hmm. And it says, well, what style do I want? Well, I want it 600, wide, 600 high by maybe 500 wide. I want it to, to be displayed in agenda mode. And I can certainly customize all this. I can even change the title. Let's take out this and we'll just call this schedule just to show you how this works. And when I hit save, it pops up here. Now, again, I can change this however I need to. But when I hit save, here is my broadcasting calendar. And the neat part about this is if I wanted to change it into to month view, I certainly can. I can just go over here to edit page, come back over here. And instead of month, I can click on this and I'll hit save again. And boom, there we are in 30 day weeks. So really, really neat ways of integrating Google. Let's try a few more things. I'm just going to delete this here. And when I go into insert, I want to insert something from my Google Drive. And I want to insert a presentation. I can insert a drawing, a document, a form. I can insert a spreadsheet. I can insert a YouTube video. And so let me introduce a presentation. And here's one that we used yesterday for our ed camp that went on over in South Jersey. I'm just going to hit select. And I'm going to hit save to these changes. And when I come back up here, there is my Google presentation all ready to go, all formatted. If it was a presentation that was auto um, uh, auto refresh, it'll automatically go like you can see here it is. It's just flipping from one page to the next. So this is a really easy way to integrate all of your Google Docs. 
How are we doing with Pretty questions awesome. here? Yeah. And so you can easily see if you're if you if your kids are are using Google Apps for education and they're making all of this stuff, it is very easy for um these portfolios to be built for students. And I would love to see students in our school come in in ninth grade, create a Google uh, pr uh, site, and then by the time they get to 12th grade, they've got something that they can share with their colleges and on their college applications. One of the other neat things about this is that it is really easy to take this site and all of the content and export it from Google Apps and inside of that walled garden into a traditional Gmail account. And so the students can find... It very easy to take their sites and you know once they graduate and they're no longer students of that high school they can take all their work with them that's awesome so jeff if you click over to uh waka's wrestling wrestlemania photo booth or whatever that is yes um you can see that what i've done here is i've inserted an existing google drive folder in grid view now this is amazing because you can for example, we did this exactly this to share a bunch of photos on our campus. We set up an account that was called Student Video, and we built folders that we uploaded from multiple devices into that folder. So now, like, I can share 600 pictures on one Google site, and all I have to do is insert this folder once and then fill that folder with pictures. So that could be done by one user. That could be done shared by many users. And that is a really neat thing. Let me show you a couple things that we can do here. Can I get into edit page? And I have a couple options here. I can go back into the properties. I can change this if I wanted to from WWE picks to perhaps something else on my goodness. What did you find here? Sam, you had some good times with this. Right. This, this was uh, last summer. I took Walker to meet the wrestlers. That was awesome. <laughs> so, okay, if I wanted to, I can change this into anything that I need to. I can also display it as a list. And this is what we did on the LAC site with all of our curriculum. So now instead of seeing the pictures, let's say there was 100 of these documents, you can just have it here with all of the titles as well. So you can certainly do this in any format that you need to. I find this is extremely, extremely helpful. Let's say that you were a graphic designer and you wanted to throw all your pictures up or your audio files or anything. Now, I want to share with you a couple things about this page. If you look at this page and all the way down here, it says comments and it says add files. Now I have the option here to keep this. And if I hit add files, you as the user will be able to come onto the site and add files to this. They're not adding it to the folder. They're adding it to the Google site. And a Google site can only hold a hundred megabytes in the site itself, which is why Google Drive is so important. So if I wanted to upload, say, oh, this, this drawing here, which I'm not going to at the moment, but I can certainly upload any type of media that I need. I can also leave a comment on here if I wanted to. Now, how do I change all this? Well, all I have to do is hit the U button, and that's gonna bring up my page settings. And I can show page title, I can show links, I can allow comments. So I'm going to deselect all of these so you can see the difference. And right here, I'm going to hit save, and boom, all of that stuff is gone. I've locked down the page, essentially, so all you can see is your photos or your presentation or your anything like that. So that's really important, if you, especially if you come up here to the top. I might not want to have wrestlers in favors of puppets and WWE Puppet Club. I might want to just get rid of that page title. And so now, boom, all the content comes up to the top. Really, really easy. Jeff, I know you can do this in WordPress, but it's certainly not that quick and not that simple. Oh, absolutely. No, this is this, – I'm glad that we're looking at this because, to, like I said earlier in the show, I had kind of neglected Google Sites for a number of years from the beginning when I thought it was kind of cumbersome, but this is this is really great. I'm excited to be able to share this with others now. So let's see how this can work together here. I'm going to add a page, and I'm going to come in here to name my page, and this is going to be called um, Puppet Blog. And I'm going to come over here into Template, and instead of using a web page template, I'm going to call this Announcements. And an announcement really does work like the blog. So you can see here, all of a sudden, I have our Puppet Blog, and I have Subscribe to Post. So this automatically sets up my RSS feed. Nice. 
And over here, there's a few questions on the chat, so make sure you guys pick those up. I'm going to click on New Post, and it's going to come up with a post, and I'm just going to call this one um, Puppets at Wrestle WrestleMania. And I'm going to just start to type in here. Now, again, this is just like the page. I can have every, anything that I need to. And when I save my draft or save, I'm just going to hit save for right now. And so here I have my post. And if I wanted to, again, I can take the comments off of this. And let's not allow attachments. Also down here, Jeff, is your page URL. So you can change this however you want to. And yeah. now I just have my blog post. Again, this can be used for homework, for assignments, for you name it. I, I, I really wish that somehow this gets eventually melded into Google Classroom, but we're, we're not there yet. Yeah. So here I am going to come back over here to my Puppet blog, and let's create a new post. And we're going to do Waka's Diva Dress Up Pick. And so we're going to put some things in here. I'm going to hit Save. And now down here, you can see we have our little triangle, which we can see our posts. We cannot see our posts. But essentially, just like WordPress, we have our blog where we can keep all of our um, homework assignments or whatever we need. It's all right here. Very cool. Um, I want to stop right there. Any good questions to hit? Yes. Yes. We have two questions. One of them from Peggy. She's interested to know if there's a way that you can download an entire folder of photos from a Google site. Ooh, yes. Before I hit to that answer, what's the second question? Second question is, can you default the new page settings so that you don't have to unselect comments and add files? There are ways to do that. Let me show you here in a little bit. I'm going to create a new page, and we are going to call this, um, let's see. I'm going to call this a file cabinet page. All right. And I'm going to create this file cabinet page. And now essentially, this is where you're going to upload files to. Let's say, Jeff, that I'm creating an assignment for you and you needed to go take a picture and you needed to upload it into this Google site. You can do so. I'm going to add a file and I'm going to add a file from my desktop. And I'm going to insert this Google Slides bumper, and it's going to upload here. Now, again, this is separate from the Google Drive. This is just me taking a file, putting it up on the website, and boom, there is my file. It tells me when I did it. It tells me who the author was, how big it is. I can also add a link. So I can paste in the URL here for my bacon ipsum. And so I can have this. I can display bacon is yummy and i can have my link description be that and there's this i can add stuff from google drive so let's say that i wanted to have this beautiful picture of waka i can put this up there too now everything in here can be downloaded very very easily so there's a lot of things that you can do here um can i add a folder let's see here can i add from drive and let's say here, can I add a, I don't see anywhere in here where I can add a folder to it and download an entire folder, um, but that doesn't mean that I can't do it. Yeah. So Jeff, just to be clear, since you are uploading those things directly to the site, yes. that would play into your 100 megabyte limit, correct? Correct. And if I come over here to the gear and I go into manage sites, you'll see right here that my site storage is 2% of 100 megs. Okay. And so right here, I can use this to copy the site. I can publish this as a template, or I can delete this site. And this is good to know because once you delete your site, it is still in your trash can for 30 days, I believe it is. And then after your 30 days, it, it goes away. And then somebody else can take, uh, what do we have here? Oh. WWE Puppet Club, Teacher Cast, whatever. <laughs> so we have all these different options here. Does so this Jeff force you to want to st you know, keep everything in your Google Drive? Absolutely. Especially when you're using Google Apps for Education, you have unlimited storage. And I apologize if I missed it earlier, but is there a way through the site that you can have users upload to your drive directly so that it's not utilizing any of that space? Uh, Sam, how do I... Uploading to your drive? 
Yeah, so if you link your drive to one of those pages, can people upload just like they would to the site, but it's actually going to your drive? Why would you – I think the answer is no, because why would you want to have a total stranger upload things into your cloud hard drive? Well, if you figure that you I have bet. a folder that's shareable and you're only sharing this site with X group of people, this would eliminate that need to have any kind of worries about the 100 megabyte limit. Now, I know that there is a way that you can add a file upload widget to a Google Form. So it could be that with enough ingenuity, you could figure out how to do an anonymous upload to a specific location that you then shared on the drive. Yeah. But I don't know of any, like, real quick off the top of my head. Gotcha. Cool. Let me throw a couple more things in here. And then we can take a little breather here. I'm going to go in and create a new page. Mm. And this page is going to be called um, John Walker. And we're going to create this as a typical website. And then over here, I'm going to edit this page. Now, there's a few things in here. And I, I, I so we can add an image. We can add sub pages. We can add a horizontal line. We can do all these little neat things here. But where you might be interested here is more gadgets. And just like Google add-ons, this is the equivalent here. I can add my calendar. I can add a slideshow. I can add a news show. So for instance, Jeff, if I wanted to take your instructional tech talk RSS feed, I can add this as a gadget here. Let cool. me hit select. And I want da 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 da. I can put all these things in here and I can preview the gadgets. And I can add this onto my page as a gadget. So I can take any RSS feed, any news feed, and boom, there I have the top stories for that particular thing. But where I like about this, and this is interesting, and people were asking this about WordPress. Maybe you can give me the answer to this. But I'm going to click over here. Let's see. you got PayPal, YouTube, Google+, Twitter feed. You can do a whole bunch of stuff here. RSS feed. I like this include gadget, iFrame. So if I want to take this content and type in teachercast.net, scroll bar automatically, and I'm going to hit this, I can actually save this, and I can show TeacherCast inside of this Google site. Hmm. I know you can do that on WordPress. I don't know if that's with a plugin, probably an iFrames plugin, but here's a great way to, you know, again, I'm very big on it's okay to share stuff with your kids, but I like having them go to one simple site. I don't want to tell them to go to Twitter. I'd rather tell them to go to my site where the Twitter feed is. So that way sure. it's safe searching and they don't have to search all of Google for things. But I can easily make up a page like this with three or four different iframes based off of the research that I want them to do for today's project. And this is very, very easy to set up. And yes, this is the full the full website here's our you know our post from last year or sorry from last week and it opens up in that iframe that's awesome yeah absolutely and so there's a lot of ways that you can use this and you know really we're we're just scratching the surface here uh let me bring in chris are you there i see i see you chris while he may while he may be coming in there's a web there's a page i created called apps for wwe on the left there I hope we're using the hashtag today. Okay. This would just kind of highlights one of the other page template types, which is lists. And I think this is really cool. I think it's awesome that, so each of those are links that link to different WWD, WWE apps. Uh, I have no background knowledge of WWE, so I just Googled it and that's what came up. But it was more interesting to see that there's a page that you can actually create a running list for people and you can add an item or Sam can add an item or whoever has access to the page can add items and it makes it like a running either to-do list or a running resource page. I think that that's a really cool feature of this. The big thing that I want you guys to understand here is it's not WordPress, right? But right, if, sure. you're, if you're a teacher that's not too techie, we can show you just even through this video how to get on how to create something, how to get a few pages up, how to add content to that page. Now let's make this look pretty because we do have some pages here. I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna go to manage site. 
By the way, Daniel Bryan just won the international, the Intercontinental title. And we are going to come over here to themes, colors, and fonts. Spoilers, I know. And we're going to come over here to browse all themes. And let's just say that I want to use this classroom site. And as soon as I hit select, it thinks about it for a little bit. And then it says, it gives you a preview. Again, this is very similar to WordPress. And mm -hmm. then I'm going to save this. Now, if I wanted to, I can customize this theme. I can change the colors. I can change uh, different aspects of it. But I'm going to save this. And then I'm going to come back over here onto my website. And boom, everything is where it needs to be. I have my page. I have my filing cabinets. I have my walk of stuff. And if tomorrow I want to change the page again, I certainly can. Now, we have a problem here, right? Like, this looks a little bit odd. And so I don't necessarily like the way that this looks. So I want to change how this goes. I'm going to Edit Site Layout. And Edit Site Layout, we have a bunch of different options here. I can keep or lose the header. I can add a horizontal navigation. And again, depending on the theme, these look nice. These look not nice. Sometimes <laughs> they look great. Sometimes they don't. I can add the sidebar if I wanted to. I can even come over here to the sidebar and I can, oh, let's see here. I can add this. I can add some more navigation links. Let me get into this in a couple seconds. I can add a custom footer at the bottom. So down here, I can add a custom footer. And again, this works just like your page. I can add anything that I need to with links. And I can change the site width. If I wanted to, I can keep it together or I can add the theme default or I can add it custom where this theme here is now 415 wide. And we can see how ridiculous that looks. Ah, uh, yes, ridiculous indeed. But you can do anything that you need to with this. Now, I'm going to close it off right here because I want to share with you guys something that you don't notice if you, unless you're looking for it. You know you're looking for it. I'm going to come down here to Manage Site. And let's see here. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Ah, right here. Mobile. Automatically adjust site to mobile phones. So when we're talking about being responsive, you can have this site be responsive or not. Now, again, it does depend on the theme you're using, but most of these Google themes are responsive. And so it gives you the options right here to be any kind of site that you want for any type of event that you want. I so can a activate that. So <laughs> let me so basically what it does is it just strips everything out, right? So it's like, hey, I tell you what, you put your site together to be an eight on the website. Great. Good job. It's an eight. You so click right here as soon as you open it on the phone, it's a four. So now I have this and let me see if I can make this on. Okay, so here I made this as a responsive, and you can see here, let me see if I put this in the center. As I'm going smaller with this, this particular theme, of course, is not responsive. <laughs> well, I think you'd have to, like, throw an M on there or access, actually be accessing it from a smaller device. Well, let's go over here to themes and colors, and let's I, – I don't want to go through all the different themes, but you can certainly figure out some things here. Um, now – one thing you might want to mention is that they may not realize it, but there are a whole lot more choices at this point in the process than there are earlier in the process when it asks you for your theme. Right. So earlier you were like, hey, I'm not going to choose this right now because I want to do stuff later. You actually have a lot more choices later on. And I just forgot to hit the save button on there. So just going to come down here and pick another theme to use. Going to hit select. Let it think about things. How are we doing with questions? Oh, I want to know who that creepy guy with no hair is. Uh, that is, uh, he, this is actually the one and only replace photo. There you go. Yes. And let's see if this one here goes into the responsiveness. Nope. Of course it doesn't. Why would it? And so. Here, take a look at, if you want to show my screen. Sure. This is my iPhone. Ah, uh, yes. So it does work. It does. And so if you see up in the, you know, it doesn't, the title doesn't fit perfectly and whatever. That's not really the most important piece. But it adds these navigation buttons so that it 
auto hides your navigation menu and when you tap on it it brings it back and forth and it scales it perfectly to the size of my screen and then at the very bottom if you find that you're not getting exactly what you want it always gives you that cop out to view as desktop and we can see just how different that page looks well yeah. now you've changed it completely but <laughs> it looks extremely different now view as mobile brings you just back like this too and now peggy asked the question how do you set that as the default and my only answer is, I don't know. And I don't know if you can set that as the default. And I'm not sure why that isn't the default. That's just the way that Google Sites works. Right. So let's pull this back up here. If there's any questions coming up here, um, please let me know. I know we're running up here with, uh, with our time limit. But um, let's see where we are here. Okay. So what I want to do here is I want to come back over here to Edit Site Layout. And right here, I have our sidebar. And I want to edit that sidebar. I want to put it on to the right of the page. And you can see everything now goes over to the right side of the page. And again, with this theme, eh, I don't want that there. I want this on the left side. Now, let's see what we can play with here. I'm going to edit my sidebar items. And now this brings up a screen here where I can completely edit what these different sidebars are saying here. I can change the navigation to say things like um, my pages. I can show all of the pages that I need to, and I can click on that. So now there's a, a title here that says my pages. And let me see here where I can get into this. If I click on, uh, I'm forgetting where it is exactly. If I hit plus, I can add a couple things to your text, recent site, my site, countdown. Sam, I know that your site that you showed me had a countdown, so I can always yeah. add this. And I can say the event is Peggy's. Very one. handy for the graduation site, as well as mm. there was an organizational site for the magazine. So we kept a countdown on the days until we had a deadline. That's a good idea. And so Peggy's birthday is, of course, in 92 days, and she'll be 20 years old. So we have a lot of different things that we can do here on this. I'm going to hit close, and let's see. Any good questions here? It looks really nice on my phone. Good. I'm going to come back in here to – I'm not sure why that happened. More actions. Now, what can I do here? I can print this. I can copy this. I can subscribe to page changes. This is an important button here. Let's say that, that I'm doing this with a class, and I wanted to see – when my students were organizing this, or I can see what kind of pictures Sam is putting up of Waka and wrestlers. Any changes here, I can automatically have an email sent to me. I can save this as a page template. I can change the page template. I can certainly do anything that I need to on this. Why is today's show important? Because one of the things that you need to do in order to become a certified Google educator is to take a series of five tests and one of them is on Google Sites. And so that was what that was the big reason why I did a presentation this week on Google Sites. And really with the test, it does go into all of these different things and a little bit more detail. But if you're looking to take the Google Educator Sites test, that's really what the test is all about. And so... Um, so we can all pass now. You should all be able to pass. There are some things in here that we haven't quite yet talked about. For instance, if I come in here to edit page, let me just drop this down a little bit. You'll notice that the table of contents didn't move. But actually, you know what? Let me cancel out of this. There's a few things here I want to share with you guys. If I come up here to create a new page, one thing we also didn't talk about yet is site layout. And so what I want to do is I want to come over here to layout. And let's do three columns. And I don't know if you can see this, but it creates three columns. I've got something here. I've got something here. And then I've got something here. And this is important because I can come over to this column here and I can insert an image from my uploaded images box. And I can put this bumper in. And I can have that here. And if I wanted to, I can shrink that down into a small. Over here, I can insert from Google Drive a, here it is, start a Hangout button. I'm not sure why you would need this yet. But if I wanted to, I can add a Google gadget for a Hangout button. And then over hmm. here, I can insert a Google video. Perfect. So this is a homework page. You can just click right here to get immediately help on your homework. 24-7. <laughs> 24-7.
24 7 total availability <laughs> whenever you want all right so i have these three things here of course i didn't take a lot of time to edit it but here i have my video here i have my image and if i wanted to i can actually click this button and it pops up with a brand new google hangout that seems like it might interfere with what we're trying to do right now jeff it certainly might and that's why we're going to do something different with it. Yes, I'm going to trust. So, so, so there's a I'm lot of read, things that you can do here with this. I'm going to read Peggy's question as she's written it. Does the entire page have to be in three columns, or can you create three columns for the top of the page and change the rest to a single column? You know, oh. sometimes our guests are very, very helpful. <laughs> and, 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 and this happens to be one of those times Way to go, Peggy. Thank you, Peggy. Hashtag put me on the spot. Okay. So <laughs> let's see here. If I wanted to, I can change this layout. So instead of three columns, I can have two. If we change this, I can have a left sidebar. And if we wanted to, I can certainly have a left and right sidebar. So there's a lot of different things here that you can do with this to cu customize it completely how you wanted to. And you can see right here, I do have this center column that I'm working with. And then here I've got three columns and then I've got a center column and that's all part of the page layouts. So gotcha. I think that answers Pe Peggy's question. I think it does. Can I come down here and create another page layout on top of the page layout? And no, you can't. But there are, what is it, nine different page layouts here. Let me see if I can zoom in. And so they're, they're pretty much whatever you want to do, you can do it. Does that does that help Peggy? Statement. Yeah. <laughs> well, Peggy's a Peggy's a okay. So good stuff. Um, now, good. Jeff, you might want to page through. Like we, you set up this page about ten minutes in. You might want to just click through the pages and see if you know we've been able to do anything with this very quickly built site. You're also setting me up for something here, Sam, aren't you? I, I might be. Oh Lord, w why do we have a bunny in a washing machine? Because uh, everyone loves bunnies in the washing machine. Yeah, and you'll notice that I also right. added the uh, plus one button to that. So you can actually add a Google Plus plus one button to your page. Very cool. iOS apps for WWE. All right. We have some stuff here. Let's see. Let's, let's. This is what happens when you give your, 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 your website to your co-host during a live show. You asked us to help. <laughs> 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 All right, so we have some puppet blogs here. This looks good. We have a lot of and, and this and and see this is so easy. Even a puppet with no arms and no no hands can put this together, right? That's right. And uh, those are just YouTube videos that we found and dropped the address in. Nice, very very nice. Now let's answer some of Peggy's questions here. Can you have different layouts on different pages? Yes, yes you can. And we're gonna click over here on our site map. And our site map is showing every single thing here on our website. And if we want, we can hit the plus button. And there is our different types of blogs. Very cool. So you can see here that there is a lot of things that you can do with Google Sites. And um, I want to show one last thing. If I come over here under, uh, let's see, edit site layout. And I go into header. Let's see, we can take the header in and take the header out. But also right here, if I wanted to, I can change this logo. I can add the logo. I can put a custom logo up here. Uh, I'm just going to go back to this Google Sites bumper that I used. And when I hit, uh -oh, when I hit OK, you'll notice that the nice bald man has changed into a really, really big Google Sites logo. <laughs> OK, so you can do anything that you is that Google Sites it has a lot of versatility, but sometimes it'll let you do stuff like this that don't work at all. That's exactly what I meant. That's exactly what I meant. So, yeah, there's a lot of things that you can do here. Is this WordPress? No. But in a situation like this where you're working with a school website or a number of school websites and you don't want to give your password away for the district-level site, having people create these lower-level Google Sites Everybody gets a password. Anybody can handle this. If they need help, you have access to it. And, again, this works for your kids as well. You know what? Real quick, Jeff, I, you mentioned something earlier that you said, you know, this might be a great option for non-techie teachers. 
I think this is a great option for any teacher. I think teachers have a lot on their plate and to tackle something like a WordPress, if that's not a particular passion of theirs, you know, can be kind of cumbersome and be a lot of additional work with maintenance and all that kind of stuff. This seems really I think easy. you need it to giant pay to the butt. <laughs> I love you WordPress, blog. so I never say that. But and you know what? It's is just very easy. I completely agree with you. Absolutely, completely yeah. agree with you here. And I didn't mean to say that techie people can't, but you and I both oh. know when you set up WordPress, you got to do a couple things. You got to set up the time, the date, the colors. Mm-hmm. The de- and when I do my WordPress demos, I bypass all of that stuff and just say, let's use the default theme. The sure. problem is sometimes the default theme isn't the nicest looking thing. And then people automatically want to change things. With this, you can get in. You can have it created. It works seamlessly with your Google Apps for Education. If for some reason you were going to be adding things to a Google folder, it automatically updates the website, like you know your policies, your curriculum. Yeah, Waka. I I agree. I Good. Think it's really so easy. other. Oh, sorry. What? So I was just saying it's it's very simple. It is very simple. And so and it's free too. And it's free. And you can create as many of these sites as possible. There are as far as I know, there are unlimited amount of Google sites that you can create. And That's good. and and they're always there. I mean, Sam found some that he did in 2012. And as long as you're not using they're the always. same URL as somebody else on the planet, you can pretty much create whatever you want and and go for it that way. Very cool. So that is that. If you have any questions, you can hop on over to techeducatorpodcast.com and check out our show notes here. This is show number 88, and we're going to have a link to my, uh, my show notes on introduction to Google Slides. All of these things here, these little buttons just pop down here. This is literally step-by-step step of how to create, how to edit, how to find, how to do anything that you need to using Google Sites. I certainly hope you have a chance to check it out and uh, put this together because it is very easy to create a Google site for this. And so, absolutely. Um, and that's the deal. We are, I have a quick announcement here. We're going to be taking two weeks off due to the holiday. So the next time that we see each other is going to be in two weeks where we bring you episode 90. And so, uh, sorry, actually, episode 89, I guess that's the, that's the way the numbers work these days. So we're going to be coming back, not next week, not the following week, but the week after that. And um, if there are things that you're looking to have us teach you, we'd love to do it. I know we've been talking, Sam, about doing 3D printing as a topic. We've been talking about Spheros. Jeff, you want to talk to us a little bit about YouTube? Tell us a little bit about that YouTube topic you had. Yeah, we're going to be talking about the Creator Studio in YouTube and the YouTube Capture app. Uh, I think that there's a lot of great stuff going on in there that a lot of people may not know about. um, And you can do a lot of video editing directly in YouTube itself. So we'll be talking about that. And if you have any topics for show stuff, please uh, check us out. There's, of course, several ways that you can connect with our show. You can find me online at TeacherCast. Leave me a voicemail at TeacherCast.net slash voicemail. And please take a moment to subscribe to this show either in iTunes or YouTube over at TeacherCast.net slash iTunes and TeacherCast.net slash YouTube. If you're over there, please leave us a great review. We're trying to collect our reviews. The more reviews that any podcaster has, the bigger their show can get, and, and uh, it affects how much of an audience that we can have here. Any emails can be sent over to feedback at teachercast.net. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Jeff, what is going on in the next couple of weeks with your uh, instructional tech talk? Uh, we actually have a podcast episode releasing tomorrow on YouTube Capture, so that'll set us up well for the next episode of Tech Educator, and various uh, blog posts will be going out over the next two weeks as well. So, Plenty of content to keep you busy over the next couple weeks. Excellent. And Sam, you're going to be leaving the show right now and heading to get in line for WrestleMania? No, no, I'm I'm actually not going. But I'll get live updates from my sister. And this week on My Circle It's Classroom, we are actually looking at all kinds of fun STEM data collection tools, including one that's in beta from Pocket Lab. And we just released a blog post letting you know that the Tickle app is available. So Jeff Herb, if you haven't downloaded the Tickle app yet, I know you have a Sphero robot. You I have do. To the Tickle app. It's all okay. about the Tickle app. Ooh, awesome. Yeah. All right. So Good coming right up now. on the Tech Educator podcast, Jeff Herb, Tickle, Sam Patterson. We will be back in two weeks. Thank you so much for joining us. This is Tech Educator podcast episode 88.